Hey guys, it's me, 80s from Four Four. So today, guys, I want to have a little discussion on Javi Hernandez. I feel like we haven't had a proper discussion about him in a while, you know. And obviously, it's kind of difficult to do in these kind of like you know match previews and stuff like that because I don't really have the time to discuss and everything. So I wanted to do one big video on my opinion on Javi. We're gonna be discussing both domestically and um Europe as well because there's a lot to discuss. This will be a long video, guys. So be prepared, and I hope you guys do enjoy. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below whether you guys agree with me. So let's start with domestically, guys. Xavi's done a fantastic job domestically speaking. I think he's made us into one of the best teams in Spain. The consistency he's made on this team has been incredible. The way we're able to get those wins and able to do that kind of thing is remarkable. Because we have to keep things in perspective here. When Bars when Xavi was appointed, Barcelona were ninth in La Liga. Barcelona were mid table. We were fighting to get Champions League. Many of us even gave up on Champions League. Some of us were like, oh, we're not going to get Champions League. Or if we're going to get it, it'll be very, you know, by the scrape of our teeth, we're going to barely get Champions League. And the momentum he built was incredible. And he got the best out of players that weren't even, well, you know, weren't even like, really, you know, like world-class players. Like, you know, looked at what he did with Aubameyang, looked what he did with Ferran Torres to some extent, you know. And these players really per performed really well. Now, that being said, of course, it's a great, great achievement and everything. It didn't result in any trophies, you know. And that's the big concern is that we weren't able to, you know, get close to Real Madrid in terms of the league tile. I think we were 13 points behind. Now, to be fair, I think for us to win La Liga was always going to be a far fetch. It was never going to happen. And obviously, we'll discuss about Europe in a bit later in the video and where a lot of people are very mad at what happened in the Europa League in particular. But we'll discuss that when we get later in this video. Now, for this season... Barcelona have been great in La Liga. We have been amazing in La Liga this season. Barcelona's got the best defense in the league for a reason. Ter Stegen's been amazing. And you look at the signs that Barcelona made this summer. You know, bringing in Christensen, bringing in Jules Koundé, bringing in um, Lewandowski, bringing in Rafinha, bringing in Kessie. has really rejuvenated the squad in terms of defense. And I think that's been the important thing is that defensively we've been very, very solid for most of the season, which is a huge positive to take in consideration. Now, that being said, uh, we are in a position that is uh, first right now in La Liga, and we are seven points clear of Madrid. However, the next couple of games is really, really make or break, I would say, for Javi, because we have um, Valencia at home, which is going to be really tricky, especially with the injuries that we have right now to a certain player. Some players will even be suspended for that game. Then we have Athletic Bilbao, which is always going to be very tricky, away at the San Mames. Um, and then, of course, we have the El Clasico. That El Clasico, for me, is going to be very, very huge. And I actually want to speak about that real quickly right now. Because for that El Clasico, let's just assume that both Real Madrid and Barca win their both games, which they probably should, right? Let's assume that both teams get maximum points for the next two games, which you would expect, right? That El Clasico means so much because it's taken place in the camp now. And historically speaking, Barcelona is not that great of a camp. Barcelona haven't beaten Real Madrid the camp now since, I believe, 2018. We haven't beaten them for a while now. And for Real Madrid... They're coming into this, and yeah, we can try to nick a draw or even beat Barcelona. Because let's just say Real Madrid beat Barcelona. The league comes down to four points, and we have a proper title race. Now, if it's a draw, I don't really think it really harms anything. And if Barca wins, it's going to be massive. So that's why I said that El Clasico is going to be very, very important. And it's going to be right before international break as well, which is great, great timing. And so I'm looking at Barcelona in particular for this season in La Liga. We have to win La Liga this season. Have to win La Liga this season. You can tell that this Madrid team... While they are in it, they're going to keep fighting, of course. You can tell that the injuries from Madrid is just too much to handle. And I think Madrid have or I kind of already kind of accepted the mind that La Liga is kind of done. Of course, they're going to fight for it still. But I think realistically speaking, I think they're going to be more focused on other competitions like the Champions League. And I think they're going to be focusing more on that. And then obviously the Copa del Rey potentially as well. Obviously, the Copa del Rey will be on Thursday. So for me, domestically speaking, Javi's done a great job. He's done an amazing, amazing job domestically speaking. However, um, I, well, actually, I want to say this right now. If Barca do not win La Liga this season, Xavi must get sacked. I know it's a really, really harsh thing. A lot of you guys may not agree with me on this viewpoint, but I certainly do believe that if Barca do not win La Liga this season, it is a failure of a season, and we have to win La Liga, you know? And yes, it's technically not a trophy this season because we did win the Spanish Super Cup, so I know people are going to tell me, well, well, it's no major title, though. It's not a major title, and I genuinely do believe that if we don't win La Liga this season, the season is not good enough. It's not good enough. Now for domestically. I mean, Europe. Yeah. So let's start with the Champions League first of last season. 
So Rajabu was brought in and already had a very difficult task. We had to be Ben we have to beat Benfica at camp now. And given the situation that was in, he that was only his second game in charge, as well as the fact that we just about beat Espanyol by a controversial penalty, 1-0, I was never really that confident we would get the job done. I, I had that confidence, you know, obviously I tried to back my team, but I knew that it would be very difficult. And we unfortunately tied the game 0-0. And then obviously it would mean that we would have to beat the Bayern away at the Allianz Arena. And Bayern would still play the strongest 11, of course, because, you know, it's at their stadium. And of course... We unfortunately were unable to do so. We dropped down to the Europa League. And now we have the difficult task, of course, of playing Napoli. Oh, um, playing Napoli. And over two legs, I was not very confident. In fact, I thought Napoli would actually beat us. And we have to give credit to Xavi. It was an incredible job for what he did to beat Napoli away from home. Four goals to two at Naples. You know, uh, Then in the round of 16, we played against Galatas. We, we brushed them aside, having to come from behind against them in Turkey, of course. Now comes the one against Eintracht Frankfurt. This is where I started having a little question marks over Xavi in particular. I didn't have that much question marks at the time because, you know, like I said, I think that was more on the players them underperforming rather than Xavi. But my question marks and my doubts of Xavi started to begin from that loss, especially the one in the camp now. Because how do we lose to Eintracht Frankfurt at home in that kind of fashion? I understand Frankfurt is a good team. I understand they're the well organized team, but this is Barcelona. Barcelona is one of the biggest clubs in the world, and we could we put out a very poor performance. And I know the scores and it say three two, but guys, for most of the game, Frankfurt dominated us home and away. In fact, they probably should have won the home game against us. We didn't even deserve to draw that game. I track Frankfurt do- demolished Barcelona home and away. They they honestly were the superior team, man to man. And that's what you see in Europe is that it's it's the quality is significantly higher in Europe. The quality is much more significant, you know. And even if it's like a team like, you know, Eintracht Frankfurt, any they were just they're just they play they played well as a collective unit, and you have to commend them for that kind of attitude, the way they were able to defend well, able to counterattack Barca and expose Barcelona's weaknesses is very commendable, and you have to give credit to. Oliver Glasner, who's done a fantastic job with the team, you know, making them obviously eventual Europa League winners. And you can see the level of experience that's very different between Xavi and Glasner. Is that while Xavi is a way better name and way higher profile, he's nowhere near in terms of manager experience to Oliver Glasner, which I think has been a big, 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 big problem, of course. And obviously, Eintracht Frankfurt, they just have the mentality in this kind of competition. They, they always rise to the occasion and always put out their best performance. And so you have to commend them in that attitude. And I just think that for me, for Barcelona in particular, I think we approach this one a bit too arrogant, a bit too ca- a bit too naive. And we, I think we approached it very, uh, we took the game for granted, which we shouldn't have done, you know? And now we go on to this season's Champions League, where, like I said, I criticized last season, but I won't hold too much blame on him. Uh, but this season, I significantly have significantly believe that Javi is at fault for us to go to the Europa League this season. I think he deserves a lot more blame. So let's start with the game for me that really caused started everything. Marcos Alonso. Fun fact for you guys: Marcos Alonso has played in every single European game I believe this season. Every single European game. I said that right, guys. He's I think played every single game. I think the only game he didn't start was against Victoria Pleasant at home. That is ridiculous. For a guy that's been barely been playing much for us in La Liga to start in almost nearly every match in Europe is a disgrace. It makes no sense whatsoever. And people are going to tell me in the comments, oh, look at the injuries, injuries, injuries. I get it. I get it. But even when we had a fully fit squad, he still started. So I don't want to use that excuse. Okay. As well as the fact that he started Jordi Alba as well. Now, Jordi Alba, I don't have much of an issue with compared to Alonso. Because my issue with Alonso is that we're claiming as a center back rather than a left back. See, if it was a left back, I could kind of understand because that's his natural position. But because he's been playing as a center back, that's not even his natural position. So does he even make any sense? Okay. Now, I know a lot of people are going to tell me that the Champions League for Barcelona was really harsh. We were put in a very difficult group. We, um, you know, we were the pot two team. And obviously, we had injuries to Ronald Rajo and Andreas Christensen, of course, and obviously um, Jules Kunde. Which is understandable when you pretty much have your whole defense injured. 
But my thing is, though, is that you have to find a ways. You have a squad for a reason. You know, we should have been able to as we should have been able to advance from the group. Yes, we may not top the group, which I didn't expect us to top. But at the very minimum, at least come second place. You know, and the fact that we're unable to come second place is very d- disappointing. And as well as the fact that we should have won the game against Bayern at the Allianz Arena. And that was with our fully fit squad. And if we had won that game, this whole group gets changed upside down. You know, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. And I just look at this Barca team and the Javi in particular. And I'm like, you really, really got out coached by Inzaghi, you know. And with all due respect, Inzaghi is a great coach. I think he's a great, great coach. But let's be real. You expect Barcelona, you expect Xavi to have, you expect Barcelona to have some more urgency and authority, and you expect Xavi to do a lot better than this, you know. And I just think a show is how disappointing it was for us to get grouped in that kind of fashion. And like I said before, you can use the injuries tax all you want. You can use the referees if you want as well. You know, you know, not giving that penalty or disallowing that fati, disallowing the Pedri goal. You can use those excuses if you want. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I don't want to use referees for an excuse. Because we're Barcelona. We're one of the biggest clubs in the world. We shouldn't be relying on referees to determine our fate. We should be able to decide games on our own. You know, for a club of this magnitude, we shouldn't be relying on other people to help us out, bail us out. You know, we have to get things on our own done. And I just think that for me, it's very, very apparent that we weren't able to do so. Then obviously we get to the Europa League and we played against Manchester United. And I knew from the get-go this would be a very difficult matchup. And... Because look what Eric Ten Hag's done with Manchester United. He's done an incredible job with this team. Because I still believe to this day that we have a better team than United. But the difference between United and Barca is that United is playing a lot better than Barcelona and they're more adaptable. Eric Ten Hag is very adaptable. He can adapt to many different situations. He doesn't have to always play nice attacking brand of football. He can play defensive. He can play counter-attacking. And it works just as well. And you could see how the golf class was really apparent. And we saw how Manchester United pretty much outclassed Barcelona home and away. They were much significantly the better team in the camp now. They were significantly the better team in Old Trafford. And while the aggregate might have been close, it really shouldn't have been that close in terms of playing style. you know. And you could see how this Barca team were thoroughly outplayed home and away. And you could see what Eric Ten Hag has done with this Manchester United team. You know? And I think for Barcelona, man, the way that we went out of Europe is just disappointing as well and the fact that Xavi's only started back for once of the European games this season is disgraceful only once this season he started back and for those I don't know what back is it's basically Alejandro Valde, Araujo, Christensen and Kunde. very very shocking there and there's also a very worrying home record I think Xavi's only got four wins this season in Europe two wins against Victoria Pleasant one win against Napoli one win against Galatasaray I'm sorry, guys. Those wins are not that impressive. The only win I would give him some credit for is the win against Napoli away from home last season. But that's not the Napoli team this season. This Napoli team is way better this season than last season. So if we had done that this season, then of course I would give him a lot of credit. But that Napoli team was rebuilding. You know, so you can't really read too much into that, you know. And so as I said, guys, my overall opinion is this. And I want to end up with this one last thing. If Barcelona, and I repeat, if Barcelona goes to the Europa League next season from the Champions League, especially most likely part one team, which we should win La Liga, by the way, I want Javi sacked. I want Javi sacked right on the spot because there is no way he can go to the Europa League for three seasons in a row, especially going to the group stage. And especially this time being the part one team, it cannot happen. It cannot happen. If it does, I will have a lot of questions. So as I said, I want to keep Javi. I want to back Javi as much as I possibly can. But at the end of the day, we have to be real as fans that we, you know, the results matter at the end of the day. You know, and I think Javi's done a great job for Barca so far. And I would keep him until the end of the season. And hopefully we can win the late title. And so that would be a good way to end off the season. And we really need to build on Europe. Because like I said before, guys, Javi needs to improve his tactics. You know, don't say your tactics are allowed like that because, for example, I think against Manchester United, he said that he would use a Rahal right back to stop Marcus Rashford. And obviously, Eric Ten Hag was smart enough and probably listened to his press conference. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to outsmart Xavi here by having him play as a striker and Weghorst play as a number 10. So, Xavi, I hope you learn your mistakes and that you need to start your best 11. You need to learn how to rotate. That's also something I don't really like with Xavi is that I don't think he knows how to rotate his players like that. 
it, he wants to do too many changes and expects that we can still win. And it just shows. Because I looked at the game against Almeria, of course. I was just talking this on the match reaction. Is that you can't change your entire back line and expect it to be no problem. You know, And yes, I know it's against Almeria, a team that's fighting relegation. But you shouldn't do that. You know, unless, you know, because the team is going to come up there with a fight. And this is away from home. This isn't at home. I could kind of understand if it was home because we had, you know, the home field advantage. But this is away from home. You know, they're, they're going to fight for everything. And away ground is really difficult. So I want to end up here and saying that that I believe in Javi. I have faith that Javi is going to figure things out. But like I said, he needs to learn a lot of things on the spot. And hopefully he can learn his mistakes. And hopefully we can have a good end to the season. And hopefully we can secure that La Liga title. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you're new out here, consider that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Comment down below your thoughts in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.